Hey everyone, welcome back to Party Week on Envy Board Gaming. I'm Nick, that's Vic. Today we're going to look at Monikers. It's another game by Alex Haig and Justin Vickers. It can play four players or more. Uh, the box says four to 16 plus, so as long as you have four, you're good to go. Vic's going to tell you how to play, and then we'll come back with our thoughts when she's done. Welcome back. We're going to take a look at how you play Monikers. It's a great party game to play, and it only takes a few minutes for players to learn how to play. Um, to start off, teams, you're going to need to divide up your group into two teams so that um, not everybody's playing on the same team in this game. Uh, each person is going to get 10 cards each so that they can ultimately choose five of them um, that they want to play with and that will form a deck of 40 to 50 cards is the proper range that you want to do. Um, and all the other cards that they didn't pick will go back in the box and players are going to uh, start by playing the first of three rounds. The first round involves using any words, sounds, or gestures um, to get your partner to guess the card that you have in front of you. So if I had these cards, for instance, if I had the Hamburglar, I'm in luck. There is a description below that can help me to come up with a, uh, uh, basically you're try trying to get the person to guess the, the words so you'll start to describe things you can even read the card but that can you know there are only 60 seconds that you get per uh per turn so you definitely don't want to read that card if you can help it and you'll notice at the bottom there are points that are crude these are going to be counted at the end of each round um that you're able to determine a score that's cumulative over the three total rounds next uh, you're going to try to go back and forth with each team. These cards are going to be passed off. Uh, the ones that haven't been guessed will be given to the other team. And until you run out of the deck, you're just going to keep going back and forth in that way. Once the deck has been exhausted, um, you're going to move on to round two, where you can only use one word as a clue. So if you had the Gerber baby, you can't use the word Gerber baby, or, you know, you can use the, but <laughs> I don't know why you would. But you certainly cannot um, say any of the words that are in here and only one word will do. Now, what's great about this game is that people are gonna start becoming familiar with the deck because some of these things are pretty obscure. I mean, Paula Dean, not everybody thinks about uh, that celebrity chef all the time. So the familiarity aspect really starts to build through the rounds. You only get 60 seconds. You're gonna keep going back and forth in the same way in round two with only one word as a clue. Anything but the name itself. Moving on, you go to round three, and this is the funniest part of the game, in my opinion. You're going to get to act out the different cards that you've become familiar with, because even if you're not the active team, you're going to have watched the other team get through these cards. So even if you haven't had a chance to look at them yourself, you would probably have experienced somebody else trying to get the person to guess. So there's going to be more familiar built up, and it's going to be easier for you to act it out. Um, can't really use any words. You definitely can't use words, you're acting, but sound effects are okay uh, to some limit. And again, 60 seconds per team that they get a chance to do that. And then until the deck runs out, you're gonna keep going with that. And each round, you're just adding up the points. Team with the most points wins the game. And that is how you play. Hey, welcome back. We're here with our reviews for Monikers. It's a highly acclaimed uh, like party game. It's definitely not a family game unless you play it really differently than we do. Actually, no, it can't be. The words that in that game are not a family game. So anyway, this review, or this score is going to get a 6.6 .6 for me. So I'll tell you, I do think the game is hilarious, especially when you get to phase three. So it's not a score that it's not funny, it's not fun, it's not like that. It's a score of the game itself. It's a 6.6 .6 for me. There's some problems I have with it as far as calling it a game. It's an activity to me. Um, nobody cares about points. I don't know. We we just, we just started adding points. And I was like, who cares? We just started playing. Because it has a problem that a lot of games have in the, in the party game category where if you're on a team and you're compatible with a person on your team, you're just going to run away with it if the other team doesn't have that kind of combination. It's just not even going to be close. Why bother keep score? You're just here to have some drinks and, and play the game. Mm -hmm. So for that, it does work, and I recommend it for that purpose if you need like a game like that in your collection. This is a great one for that. It beats out all the other ones like Cards of Humanity, that type of thing. This is way superior to that. 
So if that's what you're looking for, then yes, it's a recommendation. As a game, it's a 6.6 um, because of that big problem. And honestly, the first two phases, if you're playing with people that haven't played it before, and they're not quite understanding what's going to come up in the third, that's when the game gets good. The first two phases, who it doesn't, it's not that exciting. It's okay, um, okay at best. So you get knocked off because 66% of your game is just, it's okay. And the third phase is where it shines. And you can you keep them interested in this game until that third phase, when this game does shine for its purpose. So 6.6, .6, uh, recommended for the purposes mentioned. What do you got, Vic? I have 7.7. .7. Um, I enjoyed this game, and I think that when Nick was saying about um, the phase three being the most important, it's almost necessary to do uh, phase one and two and, and go through it mm -hmm. so that people are more familiar with the cards and they are able to guess it because having to act out um, somebody like Paula Dean or acting out um, Count Chocula or something, how can you, how do you act that out? And, randomly when somebody has never had any exposure at all to the game so I guess it's a necessary um, but you know problematic element of the game where you need people to be um, you know kind of involved with those cards and keep seeing them in action before they're able to recognize some of the um, the acting out that goes that goes on. So I'll I'll be fair on that regard. And I enjoy the game. I thought it's a lot of fun, and I would recommend it to people that like have an older uh, or enjoy playing adult games. Um, like Nick said, it's not really meant to bring to grandma and grandpa's house unless you've got a very unique family. <laughs> <laughs> Good I <for> would, you. <laughs> yeah, I would avoid I would avoid it. But yeah. Just a good game to add uh, overall to a party game if you're looking for something different than Cards Against Humanity. I did yes. enjoy it. Yep. Let us know in the comment section below what game you enjoy where you have an opportunity to act out uh, different cards or you're trying to get somebody to guess a card. Um, and like this video if you haven't already and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're doing party game all this week. And if you're interested in those kind of games, we'll be coming with a lot of different content. Yep. See you guys. Party on. <laughs>